Good morning. Welcome. For all of us to be safe, masks and social distancing are required while in the building. Uh, we have decided, Council has made the decision that since the surge of COVID has um, hit us, that even the leaders will be wearing masks all the time. And the only time a mask will come off is with the, um, is for singing. Our online presence is growing. We're learning to engage with our online community. So if you have a Facebook account, please take out your phone and check in to Trinity. And then at the end of the service, please engage with making a comment about how you have been inspired by something that happened in the worship space. Those folks who are online, we invite you to also please join us in making comments and engaging because the more that we are a part of the um, worship, the more it will be transformational rather than simply watching a movie. We're using a screen. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't stretch that far. And so for our online friends, please use the bulletin, which can be found at Trinity's website, tlcgreencastle.org. Click News and Events, and then Bulletins. To be safe, please pray the words and hum the music. Sandra and Scott will sing. The Renewal Team continues to invite us to share our God moments to help us see God active in our lives. There's now a form in your bulletin. So please fill it out and place it in the offering plate in the back as you leave. Our online friends can leave a message in the comments section. Where did you see God this week? Our service includes Holy Communion today. If you're joining us online, please gather a piece of bread and cup of juice or wine. Those in the sanctuary have received a prepackaged communion kit. You'll be instructed on when to open the kit. Now let's close our eyes, take a deep breath, and notice God noticing us as we begin our worship. Please pray the words and hum as Scott and Sandra sing of the Father's love begotten. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. Persistent and loving God, you are forever seeking for your will to be done on earth. You yearn for all creation to live in harmony. Forgive us for growing weary or complacent in the struggle for peace and justice. Sustain us with spiritual friends and a strong trust in you. Give us the willingness to do the loving thing 
and to be faithful in the small acts of caring. Work your surprising and amazing grace in our lives and in our broken world, preparing us for the joy of the day of your coming. Amen. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trusty, worthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things and enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents, for to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have, he have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Uh oh. Hmm. This is not working today. So, oh, there we go. Voila. And another one. As relentless as the Jewish leaders are to test and trick Jesus into a mistake that will discredit him either in the eyes of the people or Rome, Jesus is just as relentless, challenging them in return with parable after parable about the kingdom of heaven. Remember, parables are meant to make us uncomfortable. So if the parable doesn't make us edgy, we're not paying attention. 
Now, we established quite a while ago that the kingdom is not a place, but rather a way of life. Jesus tells a parable about a man who gives his slaves incredible amounts of money according to their ability. Apparently, the master is well aware of the gifts and growing edges of his slaves. Now, a talent is worth between 75 and 96 pounds of silver. It would take nearly 20 years of work at the basic wage of one denarius to equal one talent. So one talent is 20 years wages. Two talents is 40 years wages. And five talents is 100 years wages. The master is incredibly generous. Even the slave with one talent is well off with unheard of wealth. The master doesn't give any directions. Apparently, there's an assumption that things will move forward and the gifts will be used appropriately. How do we wait when the master takes a long time to return? The master is gone for an exceedingly long time. Notice what happens when he returns. The first two slaves proudly show the original investment and what they've done with it. The master is pleased. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. Things start to get exciting when the third slave shows up. This slave is defensive. Master, I knew you were a harsh man. The master neither affirms nor denies the charge. Now, where did that slave get the idea the master was harsh? It's interesting to note that a man who the slave views as harsh gives a full 20 years wage to that slave. The other two apparently have a different image altogether. They joyfully come forward, talents in hand, ready to celebrate. Fully alive, having grown the investment, they enter into the joy of being present with their master. The third slave, in his fear, buries the talent. He's so preoccupied with himself and his fears that he fails to do anything at all with it. He rationalizes his poor showing by blaming the master. His image of the master affects his decisions and behavior. The parable ends with the slave cast into outer darkness. His fear prevents him from the joy of being part of the kingdom that way of life we're talking about for followers of Jesus. So the question becomes, what is your image of God? We talked about this in confirmation today. Like the third slave, I wonder how often our images of God trip us up. If we imagine God as primarily a punisher, and an enforcer of rules, we can get hung up on legalism and law. Our behavior and attitudes will reflect that as well. If instead we view God primarily in terms of grace, we're surprised and uplifted by the moments of grace we experience all around us. If we see God as a God of love, we we'll find it easier to experience God's love in our own lives and to share that love with others. Scripture tells us Jesus will return again at the end of the age. Jesus uses this parable to show how our image of God 
shapes how we wait for the master's return. So too, our image of God affects our image of the kingdom, which is primarily what Jesus is sharing this parable about. Remember, Jesus tells the parable to give a picture. The kingdom of heaven is like. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom come. God's kingdom come. As opposed to the kingdom of the world. It's such a different vantage point. Jesus calls us to step way back to see the picture differently. What does God's kingdom look like? That's the picture we're called to be faithful to. The choices we make show how open we are to being participants in that kingdom. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus invites us into a different way of seeing the people and events around us. In God's kingdom, Jesus calls us to see with his eyes and his heart of mercy and love. Right now, it seems like we're getting stuck in the kingdom of the world, and we're seeing people different from us as enemies. Like the third slave, we rationalize our fear and feel better when we point fingers, blaming and shaming in the process. That's not to say that we don't care about this kingdom or take a stand. Yet the parable asks, how do we stand for the things we need to stand on? I wonder if in our conversations, we might leave space in our arguments for the Holy Spirit to be in there, to allow for something transforming and transformative to happen. In God's kingdom, Mr. Trump and his followers, and Mr. Biden and his followers would sit down to dinner together with the GOP and Democrat leaders to discuss how we might work together for the common good. In God's kingdom, the questions we ask and wrestle with might have more to do with how we show love rather than protecting what's mine. In God's kingdom, mercy and love are the standards by which we measure behavior and attitude. We have the most incredible opportunity for the world to see something different in the way in which Christians engage with each other and the world. With this parable, Is Jesus inviting you and I to more fully embrace kingdom lives of love, compassion, justice, and freedom for the sake of healing this broken world? What might that look like in your corner of the kingdom? It's important to acknowledge that living a kingdom life is not possible by willpower alone. Kingdom life begins with God's gift of grace, which in confirmation today we explored that means God's unconditional gift of love and forgiveness. We live from that center in Christ. As Jesus so expertly shows in his parable today, We grow and transform, becoming more and more spiritually mature. Our attitudes and behavior become more loving. And then we not only hear, but experience the joy when the master says, well done, come into the joy of your master. 
and we will be fully alive in Christ. Amen. Now let's take a minute to close our eyes, let go of distracting thoughts, and focus on your breathing. Breathe into all the tension that's there. Sense God's loving presence filling you. Rest there. Now we kingdom people are charged with taking that love outside these doors into our very broken world to join God in helping to heal through love. Please pray the words and hum as Sandra and Scott sing, let us talents and tongues employ. If you're able, please stand. <clears throat> Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Our prayers today will end with the petition, Hear us, O God, and the response will be, Your mercy is great. Lord of the Church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Raise up and sustain believers who will use their talents to assist with worship and to lead congregational ministries in this difficult time. Grant an extra measure of the Spirit to our church leaders, Elizabeth, James, and Barbara, and all those committed to spreading your word. Hear us, O God. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature, for the Tuscarora and South Mountain Ranges, the Potomac River and Conicajib Creek, and all the lands throughout the Cumberland Valley. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuse. Bring an end to war and terrorism. Rescue humankind from the worship of wealth and give a homeland to all immigrants and refugees. Hear us, O God. Lord of all in need, Search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Visit with health and good medical care to all the sick, especially the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. Prepare a vaccine to save our world from COVID-19. 
give food, employment, and housing to the countless who are struggling to live. We pray especially for Tammy, Carolyn, Shirley, Mimi, Gus, Ray, Paul, Carol, Barbara, and all those we name from our hearts and aloud. Send us this encouragement and signs of your healing. Hear us, O God. Lord of the strangers, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desires for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God. For the United States, we pray, quell attempt at violence and restore national goodwill in prejudice of all kinds and lead us into a unity that embraces diversity. Comfort those who live in fear of the future. Bless all newly elected officials that they may lead with a passion for justice and a commitment to honesty. Hear us, O God. Lord of hope, for many of us, what the ancient prophets said is now true. These are the days of distress and anguish. We beg you to listen to the prayers of our hearts. Be with our congregation, especially Al and Jean Jimmick, Jacob and Karen Johns, David, Michelle, Morgan, and Darren Klein, Rick, Kelly, Tyler, and Courtney Landry, and all those within our community, across our nation, and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, until that day when you gather all creation in your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Everything we have and do and are is a gift from God. God invites us to use our gifts of time, talent, and money and other blessings to love others. We join in the work of healing our broken world. And we pray, offering ourselves and our contributions to the glory of God. O oh God, these gifts we offer were never ours to begin with. You are the giver of all good gifts, our talents, our treasures, our very lives. Accept these gifts we offer as evidence of our love for you and our desire to serve you. In our giving, we make a declaration. Our lives are in your hands. We affirm our desire to be bold in our discipleship, not hiding our talents in the ground, afraid to risk, but daring to be children of light, ministering in your name to the poor and broken of this world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord <laughs> Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, give us this, this day, day our daily, daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let go of your fear. Shake off your complacency. 
receive the very real presence of Jesus in the meal of Holy Communion. Please be seated, and I invite you to take your prepackaged communion kit and pull off the very top layer. If the whole thing comes off, just sit the cup be aside and pull so that you um, can see the host. The body of Christ given for you. And now I invite you to hold the very top of the uh, cup so that it doesn't spill. Pull off the lid so that you, the grape juice is um, showing. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, not only have you given us life and everything we need, you have also claimed us as your children. Renewed by this holy meal of Jesus' presence and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, give us the strength and courage to go out into the world and boldly sharing Christ in word and deed. May our minds be set on your ways and our souls strengthened to truly give up our lives for you as a living witness to your glory. Amen. The ushers will release us from the back to help with social distancing. Please don't linger in the narthex. Visit when you're outside in the parking lot. Christ, peace be with you. Let's I invite you to turn and face each other and just give a wave and uh, share the sign of peace. And if you're gathering with us on Facebook, use this comment section to share the peace of Christ. And so we pray the blessing. Loving and gracious God, being together today has brought us renewal. This time together with you has given us the strength to move into our week with courage and boldness. We walk out into a world that seems to be overrun with sin and hate. But we are your image bearers, and we will live as light in the darkness. We will be Jesus to all we encounter as we go forth we thank you for your spirit goes with us god father son and holy spirit please bless us now and always amen, amen. please pray the words and hum along as scott and sandra sing soon and very soon
and confidence to love and serve God and each other knowing that the presence of God goes with you. Thanks be to God. We will. Someone's there, I, and I can play sometimes. I want. I don't like to do that to Wallace and Johnson. You know, I don't think we've decided that we can. We're not at a point where we've like said, well, we want to explore our options and look for for Christ. Plus, you don't know what he's going to do to the organ. He gets a well, no, no, no. He wants to do the tuba Oh, he wants to do the tuba. Um. Well, that's up to him and Wallace. If Wallace decides to. Appoint him as the person to come over and tune. That's that's. 